Hello and welcome back to the Northern Thunder YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks here to look ahead quickly to the Scottish Premiership fixtures after a weekend of a Scottish Cup action. And that is all still to come this weekend as well due to the tournament being condensed into what feels like just a matter of weeks. Um, so that will come this week in quarterfinal action. Um, yeah, plenty of, um, not so much shock results, but... Um, decent enough matches. Mull survived a scare against Morton on penalties after a pretty turgid one all draw. Mull went through on spot kicks. Yeah, the likes of Dundee United just about squeezing past Forfa. Hibbs managed to make easy work of their tie with Stranraer. Aberdeen beating Livingston on penalties. Kilmarnock past Montrose by, again, not exactly convincingly. Same with St Mirren against Inverness. Rangers joined them in the last round, in the last day after their victory over Celtic, and St. Johnson beat Clay comfortably 2-0. So it's an all-premiership affair, I believe, in this quarter-final stage for the first time since the 1968-69 season. So pretty remarkable that to the lower leagues that they have managed to keep that record up up until now, but it will be all-premiership ties now in the Scottish Cup, so we'll preview that um, we haven't done reviews of uh, the Scottish Cup up until this stage, but we'll perhaps start doing that from the quarter final stage. So, Premiership action is back this evening and on Wednesday night. You get six uh, ties, a full card of games, staggered kickoff times, though. So, we'll do it in order of kickoff instead of alphabetical. In the six o'clock games, it's Hamilton versus Mull in the Lanarkshire Derby and Hibs versus Livingston at Easter Road in a crucial game in the the battle for third and European football. At seven o'clock, we have St Johnson Rangers. And then in the traditional quarter to eight kickoffs, it's Aberdeen Celtic, Kilmarnock Dundee United, and Ross County St Mirren. So we'll go through these just now. Speaking to Chris Lachetti, ahead of Hamilton versus Mull, a crucial game, perhaps more so for, for Hamilton than it is Motherwell. Motherwell just about safe. There's four games, um, well, this will be the, the second of the five split games. They're seven points above 11th. They're eight points above Hamilton. So a victory in this one would pretty much all but guarantee um, their Scottish Premiership safety. But to be honest, they probably are already done enough over, over these games to sort of remain safe. Um, just a couple more points here and there will do them. But they come up against the Hamilton side they haven't beaten this season. Hamilton have won all three Lanarkshire derbies. The last time Hamilton beat somebody that wasn't Mullow in the league was Ross County away from home. And that was back, I think, on the 19th of December. So that's a wee while away now in Hamilton. So I need their, their magic against Mull to come up again because potentially if Ross County uh, win against St Mirren, we'll go and speak about St Mirren's issues and in, heading into this game. And then Kilmarnock as well, if they beat Dundee United. Two teams that haven't got as much to play for as these teams. Ross County could move on to 32 points. Kilmarnock on 31. And that would leave Hamilton on 27 points and a bit more of a perilous position. But we did speak to Crystal Kate ahead of this one, who's looking to make sure Hamilton remain on the same points come the end of Wednesday night. Well, yeah, we've not been happy with the uh, results um, since we've come up there, up here against them. And, and obviously before we've come in, so we, we know what's gone on in the past, but we can't change that. Um, we just want to go there and win the game. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's that's the same at, at any level, at any club, and we're, we're no different. If you drop your levels, that is what can happen. Um, you know, we'll, we've worked hard since those two games to focus on the things that get your results. Um, and so, in the last in the last four or five games, we, you know, we've produced the results that that we need to get. Yeah, that's something to look forward to. But our focus is is, is Wednesday um, and against Hamilton. And, and you know, we we want three points. We want to win the game, and that is our sole focus. Hibs versus Livingston, the other game. Hibs' lead in third place cut down to four points. Livingston perhaps too much of a gap um, to make up on Aberdeen in fourth now after a couple of results for the Dons. So they're probably looking to maintain that fifth position. We heard from Jack Ross ahead of this one. Season tickets were released at Easter Road this week and he believes that continued purchases of them from fans of the Easter Road club can help Hibs sustain themselves in that Premiership top. Yeah, I think, first of all, just so you know, that was one take. It was all very, one very good. Well. So, um, <laughs> just, just, just in case anyone's watching. Um, <laughs> then, but, you know, it, 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 one, it, it helped me massively this season. 
you know, in terms of being able to put the squad together, we have done because of the numbers that committed to purchases and season tickets. And at that time, there was a, an enormous amount of uncertainty lay ahead. And I don't think we envisaged that it would be a whole season without supporters. And although we are hopefully making a positive step towards having people back in the stadium, I think there are still going to be people that won't get to games as frequently as like in the first instance. So if they can continue to back the club in the manner they did last year, then it helps us continue to progress as a club and be that consistent top force in the country. So, um, you know, as a group, I mentioned earlier about the motivation to reward supporters for that loyalty and support because it's um, it's remarkable that people will do that on the basis of not being able to come into the stadium. I mean, we hope they're excited by the video how the club worked hard at putting it together, hopefully giving people that a um, little bit of goosebumps in terms of going back into the stadium. Hopefully that will be around the corner for them soon. St Johnson versus Rangers at McDermott Park. This is the first of two games they'll play this week. First in the league and then in the Scottish Cup at Ibrox on Sunday. So this will be the league fixture. Both teams, have, I mean, Rangers with the league campaign has done them. They've won the league. They want to maintain that invincible streak by the end of the day. They are objectives done. And St Johnson, much the same. They are competing for fifth place. Um, with Livingston, but depending on whether Livingston meet the requirements for European football or not, then sixth place could well be enough for European football anyway. So perhaps both interests lie in the Scottish Cup. Maybe see a bit of rotation in this one. It'll maybe be a bit of a dull affair. Um, just, I mean, the game on Sunday for both these teams is bigger. So it'll be interesting to see whether they rotate too much or not. Aberdeen versus Celtic is the other fixture. Starting the 7.45 games, Scott Brown facing his former club, Stephen Glass, started his reign as Aberdeen manager with a penalty shot victory over Livingston at the weekend, coming from behind twice to take it to penalties. Perhaps more importantly for Aberdeen, scoring a couple of goals in that game. They've obviously been in short supply. I think they scored as many goals in that game as they had in the last 10 or 11 matches. That probably tells you all you need to know about the job new striking coach Alan Russell has at Tawdry. But to keep up the pressure on um, on Hibs, I mean, they'll know heading, what, running out the tunnel, what the result of Hibs Livingston is, or at least at the very most, they'll know what way it's likely to go, and they'll know um, what the task is ahead of them. With three games remaining, seven points, they're still to play each other, of course. Um, Aberdeen will be looking to sort of keep themselves in the running for that first spot, at the very least, until they play each other at the Padre game. Um, but against the Celtic side, bit down their knees now, they literally have nothing to play for. They're going to finish saying they're out all the cups. Perhaps um, there's a chance to, to spring upon that while well, Celtic are down a wee bit. Commander versus Dundee United, moving on to the second of the 745 kickoff. Stuart James for Kilmarnock. They did get a point off Dundee United a few weeks ago at Rugby Park. They'll need three this time, really. Um, they were okay against Montrose Kilmarnock. Defensively, they could be doing with a bit of work. And yeah, I, I, I think <laughs> I think it probably could be a bit of a sticky one this for both sides. I mean, Dundee United are, I mean, you're competing for seventh, but much like um, going in from Jim Goodwin a bit, Scottish Cup is probably the main objective for Mickey Mellon's side. But Kilmarnock, as already mentioned, could build a bit of a gap on Hamilton or uh, on the bottom, albeit they will need St Mirren to beat Ross Kenny. We'll talk about that just now from both managers speaking to John Hughes and Jim Goodwin ahead of Ross County against St Mirren. John Hughes knows that every point's a prisoner at this stage in the season, whereas Jim Goodwin ahead of next Monday's Scottish Cup quarterfinal with Kilmarnock. He heads up to Ross County with just 14 outfield players, one of which is missing through Sam. After the Kilmarnock game, I think it's 10, game, 10 days. 10 days, so, but we've kept him up, uh, at it, kept him active, um, and it's just putting the final touches to the preparation. A wee bit of what we've done, and to be fair, they've been doing that um, since I've come in. Uh, their effort and their commitment has been there for uh, all you see. It's just a matter of both boxes, keeping a clean sheet and hoping we can go and score a few goals. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be very difficult. We're up against a St. Martin team that we've no, no beat this year. Um, he's assembled a good squad, Jim. Uh, so we're going to have to beat our best, that's for sure. So, But for us to stay in the league, we're going to have to get wins. 
You know, and there's no point, there's no point in sort of shying away from it and say, oh, no, no, it's stand up and be counted time. We have to go and get a, a, a victory and pick up the three points. So it's all we play for, looking forward to it. Her in this, mate. Uh, really struggling for bodies for the midweek game. Um, Ethan Erlihan obviously missed out on Friday night with a, a hamstring strain. Wednesday will be too early for him. Uh, Colin Quayne and Brophy are obviously just making their way back. So we will maybe try and rush one of them and add them to the squad. But um, obviously Ryan Flynn is out. Uh, Jake Doyle Hayes will miss out. Marcus Fraser will miss out. Um, who was the other one that went off? Uh, Dylan Reed has to go back to school. He's not allowed to travel, so that, uh, <laughs> for the next two weeks he's not able to train. So he's actually back in school because he's got exams coming up. So we'll be travelling up the road tomorrow night with um, about fourteen, I think, outfield players. Thirteen or fourteen outfield players. So not ideal, but hopefully we'll have enough uh, there to go and get the job done. Yeah, I mean. It is a strange one, man. I I, I can't believe that he's uh, he came in last week and said Gaffer, I need to miss the next two weeks, and I'm like, you know, I just couldn't get me. Does he get a Does he get a bonus for passing, Jim? Is there a bonus in his contract for getting a couple of A's or what? No bonus, but listen, it is. It's important, and I know we have a laugh and a joke about it, but um, and and I, I speak about the American sports a lot, and it's something I speak to the players about a lot as well because I think they're so far ahead of us in so many different aspects of the game in terms of the entertainment value and what they put on for their play, uh, the supporters before games, uh, data-wise, the analysis side of things. But the education thing in America is huge. You know, it really is. And it's, uh, without going on too much about it, it's we don't probably put a big enough emphasis on it um, in this country. You know, there's too many players, our professional footballers from 15 to 20 get left go. And then, you know, 20-year-old going out into the big, bad world with absolutely nothing behind them. So... You know, we want to encourage Dylan to do his exams. He's quite a bright boy anyway. Um, and, it, uh, yeah, I think it's important for him to, to go and get the results required. And and there's no reason why he can't be a professional footballer and have a, a further education as well. And that's all I've got time for on this preview. We hope you have enjoyed. Do remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Plenty of Scottish Cup stuff probably coming this week. There'll be a special video as well from different post-match and pre-match press conferences that we've been doing this week in the light of the European Super League uh, news. I was maybe going to record a wee reaction video on it, what impacts it could have on Scottish football, particularly the Scotland national team players. Um, but as crashed and burned um, in that time, so there's no need, but we'll still have a wee special video as it's brought lots of different subjects that come into play in football very close to our hearts, uh, fully into focus this week. So hope you do enjoy, do remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time.